because it's a crazy, crazy time and you're trying to take in so much information about the language and new jobs and new people and, and then you've got all these cultural differences on top. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This week I wanted to talk about the five things that shocked me when I got to the Netherlands. Now I've been out of the Netherlands for exactly one year now and that was obviously not part of the plan but when I think back to my time when I first arrived in the Netherlands things that seemed pretty normal for everyone else came as quite a shock to me and some things that took some time to actually get used to. So without anything else, let's jump straight into the video. Now, one of the first things that at the beginning I probably thought was more of a coincidence, but as time went on, I realized that nearly every Dutch house has this, but they usually have a toilet, and correct me if I'm wrong, there is usually a toilet next to the front door. I don't know if this is just an old house thing. I don't know if there's an actual reason for it. Does it have something to do with architecture? Does it have something to do with plumbing? I know we lived in Amsterdam, so my experience is mostly from there. But even when we went to visit our partner's family in the more regional areas, they also seem to have toilets by the front door. If someone can tell me why this is, let me know in the comments below, because I'd love to try and make sense of it. If I think to how most Australian houses are built, there's usually bedrooms by the front door. So usually the master bedroom or perhaps a living room. This design I think comes mostly from Australian houses mostly being ground level houses. There's not a lot of houses that are actually double story or have two levels. So everything's on the same floor, whereas in the Netherlands, the bedrooms are usually above. So that was one of the things that kind of took getting used to. I thought it was a bit strange that there was always a toilet by the front door and bedrooms are always on the story above. This next one can be a little embarrassing. When you go to a wedding or a birthday party or some sort of celebration, everyone at that birthday party will say congratulations to you. So you go to your friend's birthday party and when you arrive, everyone goes around a circle or the group of people and they'll say congratulations. So they don't only congratulate the birthday person, but they congratulate the whole room and the friends and family on their friends or family's birthday as well. This obviously happens also with weddings. And I remember when we flew the very, very first time to the Netherlands to go to my partner's oldest brother's wedding. And I knew no Dutch, I knew nothing. I had never been to the country before. I had never had any contact with the Dutch language apart from overhearing a few conversations. So my level was at like ground zero. And I got to this wedding and everyone was saying gefeliciteerd, to me and I just assumed you're introducing yourself because that's what you would do at a wedding when you don't know someone you would say hi I'm whatever your name is so when I get to this wedding people are saying gefeliciteerd to me and I'm responding with hi my name's Casey so it's not the worst thing in the world but I definitely wasn't responding with the normal gefeliciteerd back to answer them saying gefeliciteerd I was reading through the comments not that long ago and a woman had said that she had taken her son to a funeral and he was probably nine or ten at the time and kind of making that connection between you know groups of people and friends and family and everyone goes around and says he had actually began to say to a few members of people that were at the funeral so this situation obviously was a little bit worse for, the, for them than it was for me just introducing myself at the wedding, but this was really strange and it took me a while to get used to. And I still don't really understand the concept behind why you would congratulate everyone and not just the person whose birthday it is. So the next point I wanna bring up is probably more to do with just road safety and when I first got to the Netherlands and I would see the buck beats and about five or six children piled into them no helmets 
it's usually traveling super fast. This is like Amsterdam fast and traffic and cars and hundreds of other bikes. And I just remember thinking, this is not safe. Like where are the seat belts? Where are the helmets? Where is the priority of safety? And I guess after time, you kind of just get used to it. Everyone makes way for buck feeds and children in the buck feeds. So I think everyone else is super aware of them and makes way for them. I have seen the ones that they use at the Kinderopfang, the kindergarten, where they managed to squeeze in even more children. But yes, this took time to get used to, but I'm kind of used to it now. And I think when we get back to the Netherlands and if we decide to have more children, we'll definitely be using a buck feet and piling them all in there. So this next point probably follows on from children and safety and things but I do remember seeing quite a lot of children young children being able to cycle on their own and being on the streets by themselves so playing together in small groups you know on a busy city sidewalk and yes there was one parent who was around keeping an eye on them but the amount of independence and freedom that I think children get from a young age in the Netherlands is probably one of the really good aspects of the Dutch culture that children are really given a lot of freedom and independence and it helps grow and shape them, I guess, into well-rounded adults. This took some time getting used to. I remember thinking at the start, where are these children's parents? Why are they playing on the street still? It's super late, it's starting to get dark. And when you've lived in the same area for a while, you start to recognize the children because they're always outside playing on their bikes or playing with each other or drawing with chalk on the sidewalk. So you start to recognize the children, you start to recognize the parents, and it does create this kind of sense of community that you know which child belongs to which house. If you ever saw them in trouble or needing help, you would know where to take them to. You would recognize their parents and you'd be more likely, I think, to step in if something had gone wrong. So I think this is really key and a really amazing aspect of the culture. But yeah, I think at first it was sort of like, don't play near the road. And that's, you know, just something that you grow up with in Australia because the road is full of fast and speeding cars. Not Just Bikes does an amazing video on suburbia and the, net, the Dutch culture. So I will link his video below because the whole system is really well explained and it's a fantastic video. Now the last one is about work-life balance. In the Netherlands, it is not uncommon to have flexible hours to be able to work a full-time role, but be working that in four days. I know my partner working as a graphic designer for a startup, he was working four days and pretty much everyone at his office also worked a four day week and that was pretty standard in their company. There are, however, jobs that don't allow for this, but there's a huge majority of jobs and advertisements for roles that allow part-time hours, flexible hours, um, that the role itself is only three to four days a week. So I really like that they have a much healthier work-to-life balance in the Netherlands than I would say that we do here in Australia. I think trading your time for money here in Australia and the more productive you have to be to sort of have that value of worth within your culture, I think that can be really dangerous. I think the Dutch understand that happy people outside of work create happy people and productive people inside of those hours. So I love, love, love this. And it definitely took some time to switch my mentality into just because you're not working five days a week doesn't mean that you're not doing a good job or enough work. It's you do the same amount of work in a shorter amount of time and you have more time at home with your family and friends. So I love this concept and it Yes, it was one of those things that shocked me about the Netherlands, but I've definitely, definitely come to appreciate it and take it on board. These were sort of the key things that stood out for me. If you're an expat in the Netherlands or you're married to one or you're friends with one, what were the things that stood out for you or your friends and family when you first arrived in the Netherlands? Did I miss some of them? Do you have the same ones as me? I guess... I want to hear your experiences and your stories from first arriving in the Netherlands because it's a crazy, crazy time and you're trying to take in so much information about the language and 
new jobs and new people and and then you've got all these cultural differences on top so when it's exciting and busy time i want to hear about it if you like this video please give it a thumbs up as it really helps out the algorithm and helps out my channel if you like these kinds of videos then please remember to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye